Hello, it's James here. Welcome to Space Rocket Challenge Club. But that's right, we're going to be doing a challenge with Ivan Miranda, who is a Spanish YouTuber who makes loads of stuff like 3D printed tanks and various other mechanisms. Really big 3D printed stuff, which I like myself. And we can do a challenge to make rockets that fly. And hopefully they fly up and they can hover and land on their bottoms again, just like SpaceX. Is it still a space rocket if it doesn't go into space? and hasn't got a rocket in, well, we're gonna find out. That's right, we're gonna be using EDFs, which are electric ducted fans, with these Dr. Mad Thrust motors on, and I've got three in my design. Now, EDFs aren't quite as good at hovering as propellers, but at least they're self-contained, so if it falls over or something, we don't smash them to pieces. But we don't just wanna be building quadcopters with rockets on top, so at least we've got a jet of air, and we can do something about that to make it hover. Now, Ivan's gonna have a different design to mine, so don't forget to check out his channel to see how his build's going, and eventually we're gonna come together and test them together and see who can make one that actually works. Now, the problem with EDFs is I can't buy counter-rotating versions. There are some, but they're really expensive, so these all spin in the same direction. And normally on a quadcopter, you have four rotors, two go in one direction and two go in the other direction, and that stops it spinning the other way with the recoil of the motors. So the problem we're gonna have with three EDFs that are really fast, all spinning in the same direction, it's gonna make the rocket spin the other way. So we need to do something about compensating for that in the design. So my main design is gonna be two EDFs which can actually give the main thrust and those are able to tilt to compensate for the spin. And then we've got a third thruster which basically is there for compensation the other direction. And we're gonna try and make this dynamically stable with an Arduino and an inertial measurement unit to actually stabilize this and stays upright and hopefully that'll mean it will land properly. So start to draw out the proper CAD on the other side here for this big piece, which I've already printed, and that's going to have some 2020 extrusion on so I can mount those rotating EDFs properly and make them servo controlled. Right, I've stuck my bits of rocket together, so it's going to be about a metre tall, and we've got a nose cone that goes on the top. So that'll push fit much better, but we do need to get batteries and an Arduino and things in there. And then there's a slot further down that lets the wires out so that I can put power and the control to the EDFs. Then at the bottom, so far we've got this piece with one EDF fitted in there, and then of course the rocket plugs in there. And I've designed this so in fact this thing can slide up if I need it to, so if my balancing doesn't work so well I can put the EDFs higher up, which is cheating really, but we do need to make this work eventually. And then on here we're going to have a piece of 2020, and we're going to put the other two EDFs at the end of there on a tilt mechanism. Right, so I've got a stand for the rocket, so that plugs in there now. This will probably be attached, so of course it can take off and it can land on its base again with any luck. So I can also stand my rocket up now while I'm building it. And I've planned these parts as well, which are the EDF holders for the other two EDFs that tilt, and a bunch of pieces here that fit on the 2020, and that's so I can get a shaft in there that I can move them with a servo. So that's all my EDFs now mounted. We've got these servos here, which can tilt the EDFs. So we can actually compensate for that spin in the opposite direction to the spin of the EDF. So I would like to power this up now and see if I've got enough thrust from my three EDFs to lift the rocket. But obviously that's going to skew the servo slightly, so we need to put some electronics in to hold them in place. So I've made this little mount here that holds an Arduino Mega and the LiPo that's going to power everything and that just slots into the top of the rocket. We'll keep the mass at the top because that's the easiest way to balance a stick by moving the bottom. We also need an inertial measurement unit and some other bits and pieces. We've got to power up these three ESCs, which are going to control the three EDFs. These are all 90 to 100 amp Hobby King ones for drones. So that's all well and good, but we need some quite hefty power distribution. So I've got this big junction box with a bunch of cables. Not sure if the cables are fat enough on this end. We might have to get some thicker wire. They'll probably be all right for the short time that it runs. We've also got a turning G battery eliminator circuit that gives us five volts at five amps. So that'll be wired in there as well to power all the electronics. So my Arduino's all soldered up. I've got the radio control receiver on board there, sellotape to the top with a bit of tape, and everything else is on pin strips. So we've got loads of wires out there for the two servos and the three ESCs, and we're reading those radio control signals into the interrupt pins, same as I did with my big servo project. So that lives happily in the top there with the battery in that special holder. 
and we can feed the wires back down the tube and out of the hole in the middle. So I've brought all those wires out of the hole there and all of those go down to the ESCs and the servos at the bottom. So now I've got RC control over the tilt of those, which obviously tilt in opposite directions to spin the rocket in the same direction or the opposite direction. And all my ESCs are just tied to the throttle now. So if I uh, give that a spin, it's fairly terrifying. We've got no stability yet, but we can test thrust. All right, so it's the first thrust test. All I've done is got that stick and I've chucked the value into the Arduino and straight back out into all three EDFs. I have got some control over spin, but I've got no other stability. Obviously, um, it probably is gonna fly this way because of that offset EDF. Eventually, that will be controlled to try and keep it stable, as will these. So uh, we're just gonna see if there's actually enough um, thrust to lift it. It weighs just over three kilograms, so I'm not really sure if these three EDFs have actually got enough thrust, but let's give that a go, shall we? Right, how am I gonna do this? I think I might have to hold on to it. Oh, it has got enough thrust. Bonkers. Also, the battery's not really charged. It's on a storage charge because it's just been shipped to me. So that's on about 22 volts. It could go up to 25. And also I could push more because there's a limit on this stick, uh, the actual PWM into those EDFs. So I can uh, hack that in code and push it right up to the top. So I could go even higher if I wanted, but that looks pretty good. So I've now fitted in the cap of my rocket, which is where all good missile guidance systems go. An inertial measurement unit made of an MPU 6050 and an Arduino as usual, which sends serial data to the mega. So this is actually reading over I squared C. The MPU 6050 uses an interrupt. It then takes that data into this one using the interrupt and then sends that as serial data to the mega. And that's so the mega doesn't have to use interrupts and it doesn't interfere with the servos or anything else. So I've written some code here that keeps it stable. And the main thing is that I'm actually reading the PWMs here from three channels of the transmitter. So as I say, check out my giant servo project to uh, see how I'm reading those using interrupts. But the main thing is here, we've got two PID controllers set up at the moment. They've got pretty arbitrary gains that seem to work. Um, some D value here, so it's a bit sharper, but mostly a lot of gain. And we're using the pitch and roll here to try and compensate. So the main thing to look at is for each PID controller, we've got a set point and an input. So for that one ESC stuck out on its own, the set point is in fact one of the sticks. Uh, compensated for zero and scaled to match the scale of the IMU and then I've inverted it as well so it works the right way round. The input of that pitch controller is actually the pitch from the IMU and then obviously we compute it and what I've done down here is just basically made sure that ESC runs slightly slower by taking 100 off the value and then it varies in a plus minus swing depending on the output of that pitch controller and the value from that IMU. The other two do a very similar thing, only their set point is currently zero, so I've got no manual trim over that at the moment. Um, and the output basically is added to one of those PWMs for one of the ESCs and taken away from the other. So obviously when there's a negative value that reverses, so as the rocket leans from left to right, one of those ESCs will go faster and one will go slower to try and compensate, but we still need to tune up those values. So we've now got that active balance installed, which should compensate to balance it. So if I go and tip this forwards, nothing happens because basically these rotors should overwhelm this one. But if I tip it backwards, you should be able to hear that rotor powering up. Let's just turn that, there we go. And if I tip it sideways, we should see this one going and this one going. And the same is true. Basically, it takes those values, of course, and adds them to the throttle. So if I ramp up the throttle a bit, this one's not even spinning yet. If I start tipping this way, then it turns on. And if I tip this way, it adds on one and takes away from the other. So that should keep it stable. So I've tuned this up as best I can, really just by flying up two or three feet. No idea what's going to happen when it goes right up, whether it turns into a wobbly mess. I've got some manual override, so I can kind of steer it, um, but essentially it's supposed to maintain itself. So I'm just going to fly up and we'll see what happens. And I'm going to try and catch it again. Right. Well, it went up. It went straight up, pretty much. Well, hey, I'm going to just trim that backwards a bit because it flew towards me. I can do that with my remote. Yeah, I can see it compensating. Not really sure if it's working well. Well, definitely goes up. Good. All right, so all that remains is to box it up in a box, ship it out to Spain and catch a flight, I guess, and go out there and meet Ivan, see how his design is 
and then we're going to test them and I have no idea what's going to happen when it goes up and whether I'll be able to get it down in one piece. I'm pretty sure it should be quite stable though so I think we're probably doing all right. So that's the end of this video, don't forget to check out Ivan's channel and don't forget to check out part two where we actually do the testing. All right, that's all for now.